So, um, forgive my bluntness, but my job is to steal all of your personal information. Yeah, nice. It gets worse. Uh, I not only take your personal information, but I then wash it. I then compare it to other people. I then take that data. I then apply it to whatever industry I want to apply it to. And then I pound you relentlessly with advertisements until you do one of two things. And in our, it, well, that's part of that's half of it. There's a saying that we have in my field that you either buy or you die. Oh. Let's hope it's the buy. It's always okay. down from Really? <laughs> right. Good. So, where do I gather all of this information about you? Uh, I'll be frank with you, 90% of it comes off your cell phones. And you may feel that you are protecting your private data or you may not even be aware of the fact that we're harvesting your data. Anybody in here ever work on a dairy farm? Right? One of the things I love about dairy farms is the cows just keep on making milk. And if they don't make milk, their dinner on Sunday. Right? Well, sadly, you guys are a lot like those cows in that you continue to produce more and more data that I can harvest repeatedly and then apply filters to in order to reach the audience that I want. Now, from all of these people inside of here, you can look around and see an incredibly diverse population. You have your own wants, your own needs, your concerns, your worries. You have behavioral patterns. You have things that you like that other people don't. If you were to present them with that information, they would probably look at you a little cross-eyed and tell you that you have a problem. But there are other people in here who share your same wants, needs, concerns. They share your same behavioral patterns. These are people that you align yourself with. These are people who share similar traits with you. We call those populations. So within this entire class, there are multiple populations. And the populations are not exclusive. So you may be an individual that exists within multiple populations. Uh, females, 18 to 35, right? Uh, we could look at individuals who own their own car. We could look at individuals who have a combined household income of $250,000. All of these are individual behavioral traits that I'm able to track and find out about you and find out about your families, your parents, your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents, your brothers and sisters, everybody else. Because every one of you throughout the course of this day has left a very distinct digital trail. First thing you did when you woke up in the morning was probably grab your cell phone. Look to see if you received messages, look to see if you received snaps, to see if you had alerts, instant messages. Look to see what's going on on the social media platforms you use the most, which is probably Instagram, Snapchat, and probably TikTok. So, <laughs> let's start with TikTok, right? It's a great place to start. How many of you that have the Apple devices get a report every week that tells you how much screen time you used? How many of you have looked at TikTok and seen a ridiculous number that you feel bad about immediately upon seeing it? <laughs> well, I'm a 56-year-old male, and I look at it three hours a day. Now, I don't look at it in one three-hour stretch, although that does happen. Um, and you can probably tell how many times I go to the bathroom based on how long my TikTok time is, right? Because, you know, oh, please don't act like I'm the only one, okay? I mean, TikTok poop time is probably the greatest poop time in the world, right? By the way, take some Lysol wipes to your phone every once in a while, okay? Because trust me, those things are gross. Now, the fact that one of the first things I do when I wake up in the morning is look at AccuWeather. That's the, usually the first button I hit on my phone. Yeah. I want to see what the temperature is. I want to see what the weather's going to be like for the rest of the day. I want to figure out. And sometimes, because I travel on occasion, I'll pull up Charlottesville, Harrisonburg. I'll look at Richmond. And so, first thing, I've left a digital trail. Okay, I'm concerned about the weather, trait number one. Number two, I'm looking at cities that are outside my immediate region. 
which tells AccuWeather and tells data harvesting sites that I'm probably going to travel today. And then if I get in my car and I go to the gas station, does anybody else, when you get in your car and you turn it on, it says you are 11 minutes from home in a little alert or you're 10 oh, minutes yes. from work. How did it know that? I don't know, that's what you Exactly. So I've left a physical trail and my phone has learned that. So there's three things about me they know already. Well now I'm going to go to Instacart and I'm going to order groceries to be delivered to my house. Or I'll use um, DoorDash or Uber Eats or some other service and I'm going to order food. Well now I've just told them, okay, you guys got a credit card. Second thing is they know my home address. Number three, they know what I like to eat, how often I like to eat it, and what time of day I like to eat it. And then beyond that, they're going to share all that information with all the other services that are harvesting data on me. And then you can pretty, pretty quickly see they can pigeonhole me pretty fast off of four hours. In four hours, they figured out what my whole day is going to be like. Now, you think about yourselves. The vast majority of you, as soon as you came in here, you immediately sat down and grabbed your phone. And you immediately start checking your messages, sending new messages. Well, who's reading those messages? The person you're sending it to? And email. It's also and the same. I mean, it is. <laughs> Who said the people that host the service? If you use WhatsApp or you use just, you know, the Apple messaging service, just so you know, they're reading every message that you send. They're looking at all of the content that you send. They're looking for keywords within your text messages and all of your emails. Everyone in here has a Gmail account, right? Every single email that you send or receive is scanned by Alphabet, the parent company of Google. Every single one of those emails is looking for text patterns, is looking for specific speech. I don't know, it's going to be a good question eventually, right? And all of that information that's being gathered and being harvested is painting a picture of who you are as an individual and which populations we can insert you into. Now, my company specifically works with the monetization of that data. It is my job for someone to come to me and say, hey, Kip, listen, I have a company and their perfect customer is a male over the age of 35 who makes $250,000 a year and bought a house in the last five years and really likes uh, pickup trucks. That's pretty specific. But I can immediately go and start pulling data to identify populations. And how can I do that? Because there are 96 million adults in the United States I can start with that data. They are in 60 different physical locations, which means that whether I want to reach people in Roanoke or Rocky Mount, or I want to reach people in Sacramento, California, it makes no difference to me. I've got 11,000 TV programs I can insert on, and I know exactly what 30 million of that 96 million are watching. How many people have a cable box or a Roku player, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire Stick in your home. We know exactly what you watch, how long you watch it, how many times you change the channel during the commercials. We know when you fall asleep in front of your TV. Um, what? what? I watch it. I didn't know when we fall asleep. Because the TV just continues. Because it stays on for three hours. And you're and it's coming up next on the Big Bang Theory on TBS. <laughs> Next episode, right? Gotta love next episode, man. We love next episode. Because you're skipping the credits to get to the next program where I can sit, insert three commercials. So the more times I can get you to watch and compress that information, the better. And yet, the, the, the threshold is three hours for not changing the channel, adjusting the volume, or doing anything else. That's when we know you're snoozing. Now, how long do you spend in front of a screen? The average adult in the United States, over nine hours. A lot more than that? Good for you. <laughs> You're my key customer. 
So nine hours, but you gotta keep in mind this is people who are 65 to 75 to 80 years old who fell asleep while Fox News was on. And this is people who are going from app to app to app to app to app to YouTube and spending hours and hours in a perpetual loop. About nine hours. I think probably realistically it's more like 10 and a half to 11 in the winter. In the spring and summer, you're probably out actually doing things. I hope you're out doing something. <laughs> but it does change based on the season. How many commercials do I have at my disposal? I, it goes between 11 and 12 billion commercials a month. That's, that's what I can sell. That's great. It's a lot of commercials, right? In the winter, it's going to go up. In the summer, it's going to go down. The spring and the fall tend to be just about the same. But you mark my words. Starting tomorrow, I will get an alert saying that the Weather Channel has a bales out the door because it got cold last night. Everybody's freaking out today, right? Everybody's got their hoodies out. They're, they're dying from the cold. And so for the next week and a half or two weeks, what we're going to see is that everybody's going to the Weather Channel, AccuWeather, Weather Underground, all these different companies. So I'll start to see more and more pop loose. You are in the middle. Every one of you are in the middle of this circle. Now, these are all of the networks that want your data. These are all the networks that are producing programming, supposedly to entice you to watch TV for longer. When's the last time anybody in here watched VH1 or MTV? Been great. Okay, there we go, right? <coughs> And yet MTV continues to pop up in our ratings as saying that people are watching it. The thing is that the MTV of 1990 is not the MTV of 2023. Now it's just reruns of ridiculousness and 16 and pregnant forever. Yeah. Right? Ridiculousness is on 24 hours a day, seven days a week on MTV. It's like watching paint dry. So, while these are some high quality networks, and I would probably say like most of us watch ESPN, most of us watch FX, right? Got some cool shows on there. Um, History Channel, Discovery Channel, TBS, and maybe Comedy Central, even though that stinks now as well, because they've just played 12 hours of The Office. It is what it is. Yeah. Oh. Oh. You got some good ears, I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> but um, if I FaceTime somebody, can you tell what we're talking about on FaceTime? Mm, I'm going to scare you to death in a minute. Yeah. Uh, I swear, I'm smashing when I tell you. I'm going to scare you. Now, I'm going to go get a minute. This kind of goes to your question, but I'll answer it more specifically in a minute. So now, it's good to be on those networks, but think about all the different ways that you can watch video now. So you may have really started out watching video on a cable box in front of a flat screen TV. That's the way you grew up, SpongeBob SquarePants. You were into it, you watched it, it was all good, right? Well, now it's changed. So maybe you don't have cable, but you have direct TV. You have a dish on the house. Well, maybe you don't have direct TV, but you do have Wi-Fi in the house. So you use another system like uh, Netflix or HBO Max or all of these different add-on OTT channels. So we have not only have to take your data from all of the networks, we have to take your data from all of these providers. And then one step further, we have all of the delivery platforms. What this tells you is that I can reach you through any of these. And I have to be present on every one of these in order to guarantee that I can reach the population. Now, some populations like to use some delivery devices more than others. Some like specific networks. As an example, if I were to take an adult, 35 to 54, household income 100K, and I don't know, they, they like to gamble at casinos, right? By the way, we know that. So that would be about 10 networks. And that's where I would put their ads only on those 10 networks because that's the most likely place that those individuals would be. But the question comes in, how do I get all that information so I can leverage it? Do I listen to your 
Um, Everything you do, every conversation you have, every time you have your phone on your person, you have to assume that someone is listening or someone is watching. I don't even want a phone. No, no Now look, typically there's an overreaction and an overcorrection to say, oh my gosh, they know everything. But in reality, we're talking about 96 million people. So if there's 96 million people, and, and listen, I heard this in the first time I gave this presentation today. I had a young lady who sat up and said, man, I don't care what they know about me. Go on. I was like, okay, I like, I kind of respect that, you know? I got nothing to hide. Yes, yeah. Can I see your phone? Can I see your phone? Yeah, sure. Will you unlock it for me? No, no. Okay. 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 How many people have seen the TikTok series where a guy walks up to a couple and, he's, and he says to them, do you guys trust each other? Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. Invariably, they always say the same thing. Yeah. Oh, I trust her. Oh, yeah. Does it ever end well? No. Because the person doing the interviewing knows how to manipulate the phone and get into Snapchat immediately and say, what's all these links you got? Why is this guy saying he wants to come over tonight? Well, that's just my friend. Uh, all right, let's go to your picture library. Oh, okay. Well, let's go to your WhatsApp. Oh, okay. You need to understand that nothing is private. Absolutely nothing is private. Now, what are the odds that someone's gonna come up and ask you questions about your digital access your digital tools in order to do that. It's probably not going to happen to you. And if it does, please say no and walk away quickly. All right, if somebody wants to, can I go through your phone? No. <laughs> but you also have to cultivate your data. You have to be aware of what you're putting out there and who can access it. Now, there are state and federal laws and indeed international laws that restrict our ability to say Bob Smith is X, Y, Z. All of the data that I harvest and refine is what we refer to as anonymized data. In other words, your name, your social security number, your other identifiable traits are all wiped off of it. I just know you as 10110100011. And I know that that person does X and has these traits. And then I will create a massive population, usually over 100 to 150,000 people in a population. So is that personally identifiable? Not necessarily. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so what if you have like a card number texted? Is that if somebody's doing? Like a credit card number? It texted you without opening your phone to somebody's they would, it, it, it would be a criminal that would do it. Yeah, but like, um, obviously you would, but, um, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, well. My social media is Oh, my social security number is in my phone. And that's, then, no, that's not good. Oh, no. Oh, no. And please don't ever use your social as your past keys. Oh, no. I don't even know what it's not. Yeah, but so, having gathered all of this data about all of you, how then do I apply it? This is a, I don't know if this is a typical house, but it's a house. When you walk around the place that you live tonight, I want you to count all the data points where data is being harvested from you. Mom, dad's cell phone, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa's cell phone, brothers and sisters' cell phone. How many TVs are in the house? How many people have Wi-Fi access in the house? How many Wi-Fi points are there in your house? Do your neighbors have Wi-Fi and you sometimes accidentally link into their network? And I want you to think about all of those points, your laptop, your tablet, your cell phone, your television, all of these things 
are continually spitting out information. Right now, you can go to Walmart, I don't know if it's right now, I know last week, you could buy a 72 inch television for $500. Yeah. How is that even possible? Wow. A six foot tall television for 500 bucks. How did the company get away with that? How were they able to make money? The data. The data is the money. Because when you look at that TV, you'll see it has a Roku operating system. Roku is built into it. Oh, this is cool, man. I just go in, hook in my Wi-Fi password. All of a sudden, I've got Netflix, I've got HBO Max, I've got Paramount Plus, all of which, by the way, is free for two months. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it is cool, but they are also, you're signing away all of your rights when you do the, the acceptance policy for the information. How many people have ever downloaded an app and looked at the user agreement? All th God bless you, young lady. 13 pages on average, right? And you read every word of it. And then you clicked it okay anyway, right? Yeah. Right, I agree and go on because I just want to see what it looks like. I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you a personal story because it makes me look stupid and people love that. I applied for a new job uh, last week and I thought what I've got to do is I've got to up my LinkedIn profile, I've got to get a better picture on, on my LinkedIn, I've got to make sure that everything is good to go. So this is the picture I need. I know, who's that guy, right? That's what my wife said, that doesn't look like you. Well, what I did was I used an AI-generated app. <laughs> you take 10 selfies, because I'm stupid. So I did it, right? I paid $6.99 for 20 AI-generated pictures. But you know what was the You know the worst part about the whole thing? I looked at who produced the app, and it was a Chinese national company. When I signed the user agreement, I said, I don't whatever, I'm going. So now, there's a company in China that has 10 perfect selfies of my scanned face that can be used for anything. So I may end up uh, in some weird science fiction horror movie coming out of China. If you see my face on the monster or the killer, hopefully the victim, you'll, you'll understand where that came from. But how many of us have just downloaded an app and been like, whatever, and then 10 minutes later, you delete it? Yes. Yeah. And you think, I'm cool? No. They retain the right to, make, to, to examine your activity, regardless of the presence on the app on your device. So, all of you want to take your cell phones now and sink them in a saltwater body, right? So that they'll die and go away. But the reality is you're never going to get away from data harvesting. It's the reality that you've grown up in. You are all what we refer to in the business as digital natives. The digital world is native to your ecosystem. You grew up with high-speed internet, you grew up with cable TV, with access to Google. This is a part of the way that your mind functions. Your brain works to form questions that can be easily codified and then put into Google and so you can get an answer back. The other thing that is unique to your generation beyond any other generation is the fact that this started at such a young age for you. So probably eight, nine, ten years old, you got your first tablet, right? Probably like an Amazon Fire or something like that. Yeah. And you goofed around with it. It had the big rubber bumper case on it, right? And it had all of the individual apps, like, you know, these little simple games like Jewel Quest and all these other things, right? Understand that's where your footprint started. Your footprint is going to end somewhere out there. When, you, when you're not around anymore. So you have to consider that you need to start cultivating your digital path because you don't want someone to get your phone and look up and see your social security number. You don't want them to know your passcodes, your passwords to different websites. And you think about, I mean, 
How many phones have you lost in your life? Zero. Zero? Okay, broken. How many people have really, really crapped up your phone so bad you couldn't use it anymore? Right? Were you able to transfer all your data off the old phone into your new phone? No. This is this is where there's a dividing line between people who are absolutely fastidious about their phones and their data. Does anybody have a phone that doesn't have a case? Yeah. You are dangerous. <laughs> like, wow. Good for you. You're living living on the edge. Uh, most people do use a case. But short of taking a drill and drilling through your phone about seven or eight times, data can still be harvested off of a broken phone. The criminals are happy to do that. If you ever visit a large city and you're using your phone, people will just walk by and snatch it out of your hands and disappear into the, into the cloud. And they don't, you know, Apple has the thing of five times with no passcode, you start to get locked out. <coughs> Very simple ways around that. So you need to start thinking about what you're storing on your phone. Now, the cultivation goes both ways. Yes, we are harvesting all your data, and we're happy for it. Thank you for it, by the way. No one thanks you. Thank you for all your data. But you have the ability to harvest data on them as well. Now. How can that benefit you to harvest data from different sites to know what they're taking from you? Probably the primary way is that you can start to regulate what data is being shared and take control of the situation rather than being passive. Look, TikTok is going to eat all of our data, right? TikTok, as part of the user agreement, we have to grant it access to all of the other apps, to our location services, unless when you installed it, you specifically said, do not track me across these devices. The European Union, the governing body of most European countries, the state of Maine, uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia, in which we live, and the state of California, have made it much more secure. Oh, there was one. God, I hope it had a case on <laughs> And so... Can I have a case? No. Oh, no. Fingers crossed for you, Brian. So those states and those governments have said, I can't harvest data from people under the age of 18. Okay? The other part of it is that if I do harvest data, it has to be anonymous in nature. The Commonwealth of Virginia says I cannot look into your ethnicity and target you based on that. In other words, I can't simply say I want to target African Americans between the ages of 18 and 25. They said, that's just going too far. Look for more regulations coming on data privacy. Who knows what a cookie is? Oh, don't you have to accept it to like go on the list? Like, what do you have? Yeah, so when you go to a website, and we'll just say USA Today, the newspaper. When you go to USA Today, it says accept all cookies, and you're all like, yeah, sure, I don't care. You know, you can say no, and they'll still let you on the site. But what a cookie is, is a small piece of code that gets embedded on your device, what? and it follows you all over God's creation. I thought it was protected. <laughs> 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 Who lets you out of the house? Well, if by protecting you, you mean find every detail about your life online. But, you know, <laughs> when the cookies are out there, I went to USA Today. Well, USA Today will, will go on the open marketplace and say, hey, guess what? I got a 55 plus white male makes blah, blah, blah. And who wants this information? Oh, well, this company over here will say, God, geez, he sounds great. I'll take him. Thanks very much. Cookies do that. Cookies follow you all over the place. But the good news is cookies are going away starting next year. In 2024, the European Union has told Google you can no longer apply cookies. The bad part is, as soon as they said that, they came up with new technology to start tracking them in a different way. Brownies? <laughs> Brownies? Artificial intelligence. Yeah, we need, we need cookies, and then if we really get information, we can install pies on your phone. Yeah. 
So the, the whole point of this is, yes, your government is trying to protect you from intrusive data harvesting, but the reality is you're always going to have data that's going to be harvested. So I am going to give you the keys to the kingdom in that I'm going to tell you how to snoop on the company <laughs> rather than the company snooping on you. Take care. This is probably where you, on the final slide of this, you will want to pull your cell phone out and take a picture. Okay? So I'm going to give you all the website. By the way, if I ask if there are any D1 or D3 athletes in here that are being actively recruited, are there any? What about D2 yet? What about what? D2. Yes, I'm all for it. Are you going D1? She, no, he's not. Stop telling people that. Right. Where are you being recruited? <laughs> 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 I don't know. Everybody's pointing at you. Know, they were well, okay. Bro, I think we're pretty good. Bro, I do not do nothing. I do nothing. That's where I went to school. Kaylee is, though. Kaylee, D1. Uh, I'll tell you this much. If you're looking to go to medical school, to dental school, if you're looking to be recruited as an athlete, if you're looking to get into the military and receive a secret or top secret clearance, which most soldiers need as a baseline anymore, know that they are going to go and search your social media history and follow your digital footprints, especially if you're going to medical school. Yes, so, like, um, athletes have, like, the NCAA, like, accounts, so, like, y'all can see all that stuff? The recruiters can see into it because you're going to sign an acceptance policy. Yeah. There are a lot of people who have lost a lot of opportunities because they left stuff up on Instagram. I'll tell you the story of one in a second. So what I do, while I'm harvesting all this data, refining it, putting it into populations, that's only half of the equation. The other half of the equation is the businesses that I approach to say, I have this population, do you want to talk to them? So how do I qualify that company ahead of time to find out what they need and what they know? So what I do is I do what's referred to as a digital scrub. And if anybody offers you a digital scrub, refuse it. Okay? If they're not charging you an astronomical amount of money for a digital scrub, they just want to steal your information. So on TikTok specifically, there's an ad running right now that says if you want to get off the internet, if you want to remove yourself 100%, 100% that guy's going to steal your data. He's going to steal your identity, empty your bank accounts, max your credit cards, and then leave you in a very bad position. Yes, ma'am? There are several things where it's like, um, <coughs> um, there are several things, and they're like, <coughs> um, <coughs> <laughs> okay, so it says you need to stop being on your phone so much. You literally steal my data when you you're on my phone. And there these people are. have like websites, they're like have apps and everything, and they're like, go on here, I can have to help your journey. I, I hate to say how evil people are in this space because I deal with it every day. Every day I deal with 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 a company or a service provider who says we're going to solve all your problems we're going to make everything okay and people are in desperate situations and they're fearful and I'll, I'll tell you that people get taken advantage of every single day now we try to do it truthfully at, at my company um, NBC Universal Comcast is a big company it's worldwide it really is not to our benefit in any way to get your personal information and say, oh, Bob is XYZ. That doesn't really help us. We have to play the long game. But if somebody comes to you and says, I will wipe your digital identity clean, I will make sure that, that, that you don't have dangerous reputation management problems in the future where people talk about you and we're going to remove all those postings, just know they're lying and they want to steal your money and they want to steal your identity and they want to make your situation a hundred times worse. Nobody has the answers. The only person who can control your personally identifiable information is you. And you've got to start thinking about it today. You probably should have started thinking about it five years ago. 
but nobody knew this is where we were going to end up. The reality is, while we had identity theft in the past, you're aware of the actor strike that's going on in Hollywood right now? You know why they're striking? Because movie companies and television companies have said that when I report you doing a performance, I am going to digitize your face, your body, your voice, I'm going to take all of that information and I will stick you in any film I want to moving forward at any time and I will not pay you for it. So just like, you know, Captain Wonderbrain here scanned 10 pictures of myself to get this ego stroke that gives me that, that picture I can use. Imagine performing in a film when you're 23. They take your voice, they use it for voiceovers and commercials for the next 20 years. They take your face, your body, your, all of your images, they put different clothes on it, they stick it in a whole different movie. There's nothing you can do about it. That's what SAG and AFTRA is fighting for. Will you get paid for it? No. No, you don't get any money for it. Did they what? Some people have. If you're an extra, it's part of the contract that you just have to sign it, and that's tough. Because they don't want to hire 100 extras for the next Roman Coliseum film. They're just going to take all the extras from all the other movies, put them in a toga, and stick their head in the Coliseum. It's wild the way we're moving. But the reality is you can be a little bit proactive, okay? So let's talk about what you can do. These are tools that you can use every day to your benefit. You can start harvesting data and then you can use it to your individual benefit. And this is something that's never been available before. The ability for you to turn the tables and say, now I want to harvest data. So let's talk about a company, okay? So any company that is out there is going to have a website that is constructed out of what's called HTML code, Hypertext Markup Language. It's the language that we use to build websites. But inside of that code, we have to kind of tell on ourselves a little bit about how we're tracking you and what we're looking for. So if you use a Chrome plugin called Ghostery, you will have the ability to know what each and every website is gathering from you. You'll know all of the tracking that's going on and Ghostery will block it. They will block the harvesting of your personal data. They will also block any ads that are currently being served to you on that website. Yes, ma'am. How do we know that you're not telling us to go in here so you can take our information? <laughs> because if I was that smart, I would not be sitting in a Franklin County classroom at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I would be in Montego Bay having a rum punch watching the sun go down. <laughs> with, with my beautiful wife. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. So, that being said, your ability to know how they're tracking you and to block it will effectively reduce your digital footprint. Now, I can't control how often you send snaps. I can't control how often you're on TikTok. Can't control what you put into your text messages, what pictures you may send over the internet. Never, ever send pictures over the internet, ever. Never, ever, ever, never, never, ever send pictures over the internet. Um, <laughs> and never think that something is going to be last, it's going to last temporarily and always last forever. And that's what I want to tell you about is SpyFu. SpyFu is a website. The website is exactly as it reads, spyfu.com. Yeah. And you can type in any website address that you want and it will tell you not only information about that website, but the top five competitors of that website. So, let's fast forward a couple of years. You want to go apply for a job at Bob's Tire Company. You pull a spy foo on Bob's Tire Company and you see that their web traffic has gone down significantly. It's like it's disappearing. The other thing that spy foo is going to tell you is who their top five competitors are. And now you know not only Bob's Tire Shop, but you know the competitors that are fighting with him in the digital space. And that gives you an opportunity to apply at five companies.
is instead of applying to one. And it will tell you different things that are being tracked, including your keywords that uh, are making you a target for that individual. So they may say Ford tire, Chevy tires, it may say, you know, pickup truck, it may say sedan. You need to understand how you're being leveraged and how in your information is being gathered. By the way, if you're using Ghostery as a plugin and you keep it live all the time, if you don't know how to install a plugin on Chrome, please just Google how to install a plugin on Chrome and it'll walk you through it step by step. In fact, Ghostery will do it for you. Facebook ad library. Every ad that runs on Instagram, Facebook, or any other of its platforms are available for you to see. So you can tell what the company sells, whether they had a special last month. It's all held in that library and you can see it for absolute free. All you have to do is just narrow it down by geography and by the type of industry that it is. SEM Rush is very much like SpyFu. It'll tell you the key information they want to harvest from you. And then I think probably the most valuable tool I can tell you about is Hunter.io. If you take nothing else away from this, take Hunter.io. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so in Ghost Street, what stuff is happening? No, they do not, because they are an ethically sourced company that works for data fraud prevention. And they're, they're what we call white hat certified. A black hat certification means that you're actively hacking. A white hat certification means that you're judged by the vast majority of people working in the industry as being ethical in your approach. And I'll tell you, if NBC Universal uses it, you can be sure it's pretty safe. We would hate to see Jimmy Fallon's personal records spilled all over God's creation. Hunter IO. Hunter IO will give you the email address of most of the employees of a company. So if it's bobtires.com, you can go to hunter.io and type in bobstires.com and it will produce for you a list of the email addresses of the people that work there. Why is that beneficial? Well, you went to Bob's Tires and two days later all four tires were flat. You went to try to get it repaired and the person at the front counter told you to go jump in the river. Well, if I get the president's name to Bob's Tires and I write him an email saying, hey, I bought tires four days later, they all went flat. I'm going to give you a bad review on Google. I'm going to go to Foursquare and Yelp and tell on you as well. You might find that you get a response back. The other thing is, if you're applying for a job and you can't get past the gatekeeper, the person sitting in front of you says, no thanks, I think we're all good. All you have to do is look up the human resources department for the company you just looked at, send your resume directly to them, and you'll have a much better opportunity. Hunter IO is, is significant because it does break down all of the barriers between you and the decision makers within a company. I strongly suggest that you use that website. Admall Audit is something that we use internally. It doesn't really make that big of a difference. But let me tell you, <clears throat> this is a lesson that most people in the business world need to learn the hard way. And I say it and it's kind of funny, but it's really not. You never want to call anybody's baby ugly. All right? Now, look, the reality is when we say this, what we want to do is to say, Look, your website is crappy, your form fills are horrible, your commercial is, is, I can't even figure out what your commercial is about. That's the last thing you ever want to say to a potential client because you're calling their baby ugly. And if any, you know, when you guys have kids, uh, I know that if anybody called my son ugly, it would, I don't know. I wouldn't look good in prison. But I'll just say that you never want to call somebody's baby ugly, and you never want to be the person who says, hey, you're tracking me. Why are you tracking me? Stop it. And I don't like what you're doing, and your website's terrible. You have to be as responsible with another company's data as you hope that company will be responsible with your data. And the reality is that a lot of people get into a position where they have a snippet of data and they make a judgment or they make a decision that is inaccurate. I think we've all had that judge a book by its cover moment 
But we have to be careful in the digital realm as well that when we gather information like this, we have to be careful about how we use it. And so I would really caution you about how you use this type of scrub. <laughs> All right, that's the picture. That's the one you want to take. That's the websites and the plug-in sites to help block and restrict the data being harvested. <laughs> How many people here use Facebook Messenger ever? Have you deleted things out of it? Yes. You know it's still there? Yeah. Okay. Good. How many people use Snapchat on a regular time? Yeah. Every day. You know your metadata is still being recorded all the time, even though the individual message may have been exact. The information about that message is still present and can be subpoenaed by law enforcement. Some people look worried, some people don't care. Good. What did you say? Okay. So, your questions. Ask me anything. Yes, ma'am. Where's your writing at? I don't wear one because I have really fat fingers. Uh, oh, Ms. Thompson, can you confirm? I'm a diabetic and I tend to swell up. Can Ms. Thompson confirm on that note? Yeah. Went to the back of Madison's so. <laughs> <laughs> That's even creepier. I can't wear jewelry. <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> you know what? I thought about that, but it's even tighter on my fingers. Yes, um, because the theory was that each individual part of a cookie is part of a larger ingredient to paint a picture of who you are. And so the cookie really isn't the tracking code, you are the cookie. Okay, but then why isn't it like cake or something like that? I don't know. We've got to invent some new technologies here to name it correctly. Yes. Yes. If you cleared your cache, does everyone know what a cache is? Yeah. yeah. All right, so no. the cache is your temporary no. files that are held in a place so that you can load them more quickly, right? If you cleared your cache, if you cleared your search history, if you deactivated all of your Gmail accounts and your drive, deactivated your drive, deleted Chrome from your device, you would be 90% there to deleting your Google footprint, your Google picture. But you're going to have to use another browser, and you're probably going to go to Firefox or DuckDuckGo, right? Again, you are incrementally increasing your privacy. But Firefox has been hacked pretty easily. DuckDuckGo is a little better. I would never use Safari. Um, and I would probably tell you that if you're that concerned, I would immediately sign up for a cellular VPN, virtual private network, and I would bounce the signal at least five times and always end up as your point of destination of Nordic country like Sweden, Denmark, Finland. You're still really vulnerable, but you are a factor of 10 less vulnerable than everybody who doesn't do that. Um, and VPNs are notorious for recording your information and then dropping it on Tor or some other dark website. Um, I don't know. You're doing better than 99% of the world, right? But the reality is we can't really live without Google. Especially if you're a student, right? You have to use a Gmail address, you have to use a drive. Uh, I hope that people are not putting personal stuff on your school accounts. Um, I've got four Gmail accounts. I've got Wallace.Arrow1, Wallace.Arrow2, Wallace.Arrow3. So I kind of divide up my load. I try never to sign up for an app or a service on the web using a credit card or a debit card in my name. My recommendation would always be to go to Walgreens or CVS and get a prepaid card. 
load it, use that for the subscription, um, and that will help protect your identity as well. It seems like a lot of work, right? I mean, yeah. You, you have to be active in the pursuit of your privacy, where before privacy was the standard, and people who attempted to violate it were criminal. Now you're in a situation where you have to be active participants. And think about, think about the adults in your life and how incredibly negligent they are with their information. Um, because, I mean, I know my parents are 85. Um, not to tell too much, but their passcode is 123123, right? That's me. Is it? So the reality is you need to have a complex password. When you're formulating a password, do not use a word. Right, so a lot of my passwords have always been like, uh, I used to use something called Lopadoodle12345. Lopadoodle? It's a made up word, right? What they want you to do now is to use acronyms, like this is my phone, P-I-N-P, and then a number that you generate. Because most of the algorithms that are out there can figure out your passcode or your six digit code to get in your phone in about 25 or 30 minutes. Have you ever gone to a screen repair place where they replace the screen on your iPhone or your iPad? Mm -hmm. Those are the, also the guys who have the, the random number generators that can go through and get the number on your phone and, and open it up. It's a, it's a problem in the coding of the operating system of the phone, but it's easy enough to do. If you have the right amount of money, you can unlock any phone. And from a legal standpoint, you cannot be compelled to unlock the phone. They can't force you to give them the code. They can't force you to use facial recognition, so always turn it off. Yes, ma'am. I code in Python and in SQL. Those are the only two languages I work with. I took JavaScript class last year. Yeah. And I managed to make a password. Yeah. Which I didn't realize that worked. A little knowledge is a very dangerous thing in this field. Yes, ma'am. So when you were showing all the, I guess, the TV channels and everything, that huge circle. Yeah. I didn't see anything with um, apps that require a VPN, you know, apps you're not supposed to have. But VPN, if you pay for one, it does protect you, doesn't it? Uh, it does. And, and it will protect you about 90%. You know, it, does everyone know what a VPN is? Yeah, yeah. VPN is a virtual private network. You pay to have your internet signal bounced all over God's creation and it de-identifies your IP address that marks, and your device ID tag as well now. Um, I think a lot of VPNs are very valuable. I also think that the people who generate the VPNs are, are not always nice people. And they're like Nord VPN had a huge leak a couple of years ago where they gave away people's information. I think it's a good thing personally because I think anything that can interrupt that flow of data from you to them is a good thing. Um, but if you're using Tor, Tor is a is an anonymized web browser that's made for the dark web. Um, just be real careful about how you're bouncing around. I would use a VPN all the time, and bounce it at least five times, and try to have it end up in Norway or Sweden as your endpoint. It'll take a half a second for everything to load faster. Um, and a, a little secret, if you want to watch some really cool shows, get a Netflix subscription with a VPN. You can watch stuff from all over the world just by changing your native location. Usually, um, if we can't find something, we turn on ours and we go on some other thing. But... Ooh, there it is, right? Yeah. Pretty cool system. Any other questions, worries, or concerns? Give them your, your background. Oh, uh, yeah, so who am I and why do I know all this crap? Um, so I originally was a soldier. 
I joined the Army. Uh, and then when I came out, I knocked around for a while and worked in TV and radio. And then uh, ended up being a high school teacher where uh, the lovely Wisconsin and I met. Uh, we were fellow teachers. Uh, did that for eight years and then I went to work as a marketing executive for a, a, a car dealership. Now I went in there not knowing a lot and it only took two million dollars of my boss's money for me to figure some stuff out. Thank God it wasn't my money. But that's where I learned SEO, SEM, digital marketing, social media marketing. And then because I was buying from NBC Universal, they recruited me to uh, go to work for them. And one of the interesting things is if you go to work for a really big corporation, there are pluses and minuses. For me, one of the pluses were they paid 100% of my tuition. So as soon as I started going there, I got a master's degree uh, in digital marketing and advertising. And then I decided I need to know how lawyers think, so I got a Juris Master in International Law. And when I finished that, I couldn't figure out what else to do, so I got an MBA in project management. And then after that, I was still feeling like I had too much time on my hands, so I am this year completing a doctorate um, in strategic communication. All of my degrees are from Liberty. Um, Liberty gives a 75% tuition discount to veterans, and my company made up the remainder of that. So, you know, I, I speak of which I know and work every day. And then to get a job like what you have, you don't need a degree, right? No, in fact, I would say if you want to get a job in the, in the data science, data analyst field, uh, take classes in Python and SQL, learn how to manipulate data, and you do not need a college degree. Most times when you apply for a job for something like I do, they give you a technical test. They'll say, here's a data field, we need X, you have Y amount of time to do it, program away. You can type as little as 10 lines of code, accomplish the goal, and then you're good to go. And I'll tell you, you can, you can jump to six figures pretty quick if you understand Python and SQL. It's a great place to work. It's a great field to work because everybody wants those skills. And if you use AI like ChatGPT, Claude, and all of these other systems, um, know that while they can generate code, they can't apply the human touch to it. There's still something unique about the way our brains work. And it can make a really big difference for you. And you can work anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world. Yes, ma'am. Do you have anything about um, factory resetting the devices? Like, Doing factory resets will not set the device ID back to a new number. So your device ID is permanent. It's etched on the literal board. Mm -hmm. So you can do a factory reset and it will it, it eliminate 90% of the information, but your device ID is always going to be there. There's no way to get rid of that. Yeah.